Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 15th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today's a little bit sort of a patch to stay cleanup uh, episode where we're going to cover some of things sort of missed yesterday. But let's start uh, with the uh, two issues that apparently are uh, affecting people installing Tuesday's patches. First of all, uh, there is a problem with applications that are using ODBC connections uh, through the Microsoft ODBC SQL Server uh, driver. You will get some problems here where you're not able to connect. No real workaround for this at this point. And uh, well, uh, something uh, Microsoft is working on. Secondly, and that has actually been sort of covered a little bit uh, more. If you are running Hyper-V, you may have issues creating new uh, virtual machines. The problem happens to occur if you're using Hyper-V hosts managed by SDN configured system center virtual machine manager and error messages that you're getting are sort of pointing to ethernet connection issues. There is a workaround that Microsoft published some commands that you can run in order to fix this. You'll find a link in the show notes to the respective page on Microsoft's site that covers these two issues. So maybe by the time you're listening to this, they came up with some workaround for the database connection issue as well. The other option, of course, is always just to uninstall the patch. On the other hand, a problem introduced by the November patch that apparently uh, caused memory issues on the main controllers. Well, uh, that problem has been now fixed in the December patch. So the December issue uh, will uh, resolve this and also, uh, of course, fix the associated security issue. And then we had a one vulnerability that was patched actually back in September, uh, CVE 2022-37958. Uh, this was classified originally as an information disclosure vulnerability in the Spanago uh, protocol. The problem here is that apparently it's not just an information disclosure vulnerability, but also a remote code execution vulnerability and one that uh, does happen pre-authentication. In order to exploit the vulnerability, you need to trick a Windows host to attempt uh, to establish a connection to you. So uh, typical ways this has been done is via links and such, uh, but uh, good pretty much a wide range of protocols are vulnerable here, SMB, RDP, and such. All of them that use uh, Spinecco potentially for uh, authentication. So uh, even in some cases, SMTP and HTTP uh, can be used for that. Uh, This uh, vulnerability has now been classified as critical. If you did apply the September patch, you're all good. If you haven't yet, you may want to rethink that decision. But well, then let's talk a little bit about other uh, vulnerabilities here. Uh, VMware uh, fixed a critical vulnerability in pretty much sort of all of its virtualization products, uh, VMware ESXi, Workstation, and Fusion. This is a problem with uh, the USB controller in the virtual machine. One of those very typical virtualization issues where you have a driver, like in this case, a USB that actually sort of runs in the host and a remote code execute in one of these drivers then becomes a VMware escape vulnerability, which is why this one is rated uh, critical. And in newly exploited vulnerabilities, we also have an issue with uh, Veeam, the virtual machine uh, backup solution. And now uh, the critical vulnerabilities here, CVE 2022-26500 and 26501, were patched back in March, but now apparently are actively being exploited. And in the category that no good deed does go unpunished, if you're offering free hosting, as we have often seen, you will end up with 
it being abused for phishing pages. Now, this is of course very obvious for uh, some of the free web hosting uh, services, but uh, according to check marks, uh, the attackers have now discovered that you can also use various uh, package manager pages in order uh, to host your phishing page. They discovered uh, thousands of phishing pages on the NuGet NPM and also on the PyPy pages, basically disguised as packages for these respective languages. For the most part, they appear to use things like, for example, the package description in order to then embed links to trick visitors to visit their respective pages. Well, and that's it for today. And uh, while I'm not sure who won yet, uh, because it's uh, sort of happening as I'm recording this, uh, congratulations to everybody who won and got nominated also for this year's Difference Maker Award. Uh, as I said, the sort of official announcement is happening kind of right now. So uh, check out the website to see who won. Well, Thank you for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.